Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Duck33 and welcome back to another Far Cry video. So, you probably already know what this video is. So, like the last three times, uh, and probably to conclude this little mini-series that we have going here, uh, we are going to now go through Far Cry 4 and see if it holds up against modern games in 2021. Real quick, I want to just say that this is my opinion and my opinion only. If you have a different opinion, feel free to leave a comment down below. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, starting off, we're going to look at combat. Like pretty much every other game in the series, combat is pretty simple. It's a realistic shooter where you run around with guns and shoot people. I do want to mention that stealth is much more apparent. Uh, similar to 3, you use healing syringes in order to heal. However, by the end of the game, you can't hold nearly as many syringes as you could at the end of Far Cry 3. Not to mention that the green leaves required for said syringes only appear in groups of two or three, and you need two green leaves to craft a healing syringe in this game. Because of this, I recommend you get the skill where you get two leaves from each plant as soon as you can. Overall, the combat is just more of Far Cry 3 with some quality of life improvements, uh, such as not be sliding not being a skill, cough, cough. Or cooking grenades not being a skill. Again, cough, cough. Going along with this, there are a lot of returning weapons, such as the Z93 Sniper or the Bushman Signature Rifle. While on the topic of signatures, might as well talk about them. For those who don't know, signature weapons are special weapons that usually have better set stats than their st standard counterparts. On top of that, most of them come with special attachments that their normal variants cannot equip. For example, the Bull Signature Shotgun comes with a silencer, something the normal uh, M133 shotgun cannot equip. You would acquire these signature weapons by doing various objectives in the game, such as taking out X number of outposts or getting X level of karma, both of which we will get to in a minute. Overall, Far Cry's content is just more of Far Cry 3. Next up is Story. This game, similar to Far Cry 3, has a linear story. The story does not does have some choice in it, meaning that you can choose who leads the main friendly faction, the Golden Path. However, even with this choice, it only changes the ending, where you kill whatever leader you don't side with. As far as villains go, Pagan Min is a pretty awesome villain. He's not nearly a, as good of a villain as Voss, but still good nonetheless. Instead of being serious or menacing, Pagan is more charming and never really seems mad or aggressive. He only appears a couple of times in person where he keeps his charming trend. Even when he calls you, he never talks to you in, aggressive, in an aggressive voice and always starts off by saying, Ajay, my boy, and talks to Ajay as if he's family, which I mean, he kind of is. I don't know the whole lore, but he kind of is. Moving away from Pagan, the story is pretty simple. You play as Ajay Gale, an American boy who travels to the Asian country of Kairat to scatter his mother's ashes atop the mountain. When he first arrives, he meets the dictator of Kairat, Pagan Min, who used to date Ajay's mother. In the first act, you join a rebellious group called the Golden Path, who has set out to end Pagan's regime. Despite having less campaign missions than Far Cry 3, I found that it takes significantly longer to beat due to the missions taking longer to complete. There are also a lot of uh, returning characters such as Willis Huntley, who is one of my favorite quotes from the game uh, in the form of, look at you, American on the inside, useful on the outside. Willis, having appeared in almost every Far Cry game, is a pretty cool person, always talking about patriots and stuff. There are also some pretty cool side characters like Longinus, who is a priest who also sells guns. Yes, I know it's ironic. Um, in fact, it's very possible that we could see Longinus in Far Cry 6 after he says that he will travel to Cuba. Uh, if you want to see that cutscene, uh, you can either look it up on YouTube or if you finish all of his specific Longinus missions, then that cutscene will play. Other cool side characters include Yoji and Reggie, which I'm pretty sure are the main reason this game is rated for use of drugs. During these quests, you are a test subject for the two guys' new concoction. To sum up all of their missions, you have a drug trip and follow a certain path that eventually leads you to the final objective. 
Our next subject is open world, and this is probably going to be the longest subject. I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty sure it took me 20 hours to finish the game because of the side content. The two main side content features are outposts and bell towers. Outposts haven't really changed a whole lot since the last Far Cry game, still just being out of the way settlements overrun by enemy forces. I did notice, however, that there were some outposts that were exceptionally large, almost being able to pass as small towns. I do have one major complaint about the outposts. You, you would think that like a vertically centered game um, would be helpful to stealth, right? You know, you have the mountains and stuff like that. However, it actually limits your options and direction of attack. If an outpost is pushed right up against the side of a cliff, you can now only attack from three sides rather than four. Furthermore, not a whole lot of outposts have high vantage points to look over the outpost. Most of the time, if an outpost is near a mountain, the peak is going to be so high that your camera is useless. There are a lot of there are also a lot of homes in the outpost, which, when you first hear it, does not seem so bad and really does not seem bad at all. However, where the bad things come in <clears throat> is the overhangs. Most, if not all, of the houses in this game have overhangs or porches, meaning that it's very possible for an enemy to hide under an overhang. And oh my god, is it annoying. When you know when the guy, where the guy is, he's all alone, and he's just hiding under an overhang. Too many times have I spent five minutes to scout out an area, only to be detected when finally finding a way to attack, because of some guy under an overhang. Moving away from outposts, let's talk about bell towers. Similar to outposts, bell towers haven't changed much. And it's, at its bare bones, bell towers are parkour challenges in your FPS game. Because who doesn't love parkour in FPS games? Like most things in video games, bell towers get more difficult the further you get into the game. Because that's just kind of how video games work. They start as just jumping from point A to point B all the way up to point Z then holding the interact key until you trigger the animation to liberate the bell tower. But by the time you reach the final bell tower, you will, be, you will be using the grapple, having to swing from one part of the tower across a gap to the other. In fact, I think I actually failed a bell tower after doing 16 or 17 flawlessly. Doing a certain amount of bell towers will unlock certain weapons for free, which really makes you want to do them. Other than that, they just reveal, reveal parts of the maps that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise, so I mean, I guess that's cool. Other than that, there isn't a whole lot more to say about bell towers. They're kind of cool the first time, the first couple of times, but after you, uh, after your first half dozen or so, they will just become a chore. But wait, there's more side content. Not only are there outposts and bell towers, there is a crap ton of side missions. I'm not even kidding when I say that every outpost unlocks about three to four dozen, not dozen, three to four side missions. Multiply that by about 24, because that's how many outposts you are, uh, outposts there are, and you have roughly 130, I think, side missions. Most of these are pretty easy, and some actually give you something other than money and XP. The most common missions, however, I see appear when I liberate outposts are an eye for an eye, hostage rescue, and assassination. Now, for the most part, these three are all pretty simple. An eye for an eye quests are very similar to the wanted missions from Far Cry 3, where you are tasked with killing a certain enemy with a certain weapon. Out of the three listed, this is probably the hardest because it's very possible to be given an absolute trash weapon and have to fight through do a dozen or two enemies. To make it even worse, some of the enemies can be heavies, which make them e that much harder. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but I'm pretty sure that you only have to kill the target with the specific weapon. Um, so I guess that's a silver lining. The next side mission, Hostage Rescue, is also pretty simple. When you go to a certain location, there will be four hostages spread around the area. The idea is that you save at least two out of the four hostages. The best way to do this is by not being detected, but in case you 
do get detected, the guards will start rushing towards the hostages in an effort to kill them. These missions are really easy if you have uh, even just one good silenced weapon. The hostages are usually pretty spread out, and when they're in groups, there's still only one guard. Moving on, the last of the listed side missions is the assassination missions. These missions can be tricky depending on your playstyle, but if you are like me and specialize in stealth, these won't be too difficult. Now, okay, I'm going to go off script for a little bit. I know I just failed that um, eye for an eye quest four times in a row, so me saying that stealth is my specialty is kind of ironic. Just, just go with it. Your main objective of these missions is to assassinate a target, as the name suggests, but the twist is that you can't be detected at all. Being detected will result in failing the mission and the game reloading a checkpoint. The best piece of advice I can give for these missions are to use the camera to mark all enemies, then sneak in and kill the target. After you kill the target, there is an optional objective to hide the body at, in a given spot, which will award extra XP and money. To finish up this subject, which has taken up a full three pages of the script, we're going to be talking about Kairat Fashion Week side missions. To put this simply, they are like the legendary hunting missions from Far Cry 3, which each, each one of them uh, having you kill a harder than average animal, which will then result in you getting its skin and hide. All hides will be used to make the final stage of the craftables, such as ammo pouches or explosive pouches. <sighs> the last subject of this video is going to be graphics. I'm just going to lay it out here. This game looks really good. For a game made in 2014, it looks amazing. I've recently finished The Last of Us Remastered, finally, and yeah, 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 I know, I'm seven years late, but it doesn't even come close to Far Cry 4. Unlike Far Cry 3, which had a cel-shaded glaze over everything, this game looks more real, takes a more realistic approach. Now, it's no Far Cry 5, but the game still looks really good. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, and if you guys really enjoyed, be sure to subscribe because that'd be awesome. Um, I think this is going to conclude our little mini-series here. Um, I'm probably going to do more Far Cry 6 content when it comes out. Um, yeah. Other than that though, uh, let me know what your favorite Far Cry game down, Far Cry game is down in the comments. And other, and other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.